Hello everybody, welcome back to 539 Productions. So I'm out on the road again today at another amazing little historic location, uh, smack dab in the middle of this really creepy patch of uh, forest here in Indiana. And uh, let's uh, go ahead and get out here and check out this amazing looking historic graveyard. It looks like it has a actual key lock on it. I'm hoping it's not fully, okay good. Wow. Definitely lots of historic uh, graves here. A very interesting uh, entryway here. I'm not sure exactly what these represent here. But maybe it was just for traction back in the day. I don't know. It could have been something that was intended for a horse and carriage or uh, I'm not really sure. So uh, make sure you let me know in the comments below if you know what this would have been used for. Uh, right here looks almost like a base stone which uh, would have had a stand-up marker that would have read a person's uh, name and date obviously. Just kind of making my way to the back right now to kind of check out the size of it and uh, how many different markers that we're working with at this moment. It seems to be a lot bigger than I actually thought it was going to be. There seem to be hundreds and hundreds of uh, people that were buried here. Here's like some of these rows kind of merged together right here. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but I love this marker. It looks similar to a lot of those uh, tree stump markers that I see in places. However, it's uh, built a lot differently than the rest of them and it lo almost looks like a pile of firewood which is really kind of cool but in similar fashion to the other ones that I have found before it has the individual markers right here uh, for each family member as well as the main large marker which is again carved to look exactly like uh, pieces of a tree in this case Seems there's definitely some pockets of major destruction. Wow. I'm noticing a few different of these uh, very tiny infant stones, but they have incredible detail on them, which is something I actually have never run through or run across ever. Maybe that's just because it's so hard for those to last throughout the years. And you can see that it's been repaired several times. And uh, right here, I believe, is a gunshot hole. Um, but someone definitely has uh, attempted to uh, keep it in the best possible condition. And right next to it, I'm assuming this was a similar one just due to the size. However, it has not fared so well over the years and is now kind of broken apart and fallen. And uh, hopefully somebody comes in and uh, does a little bit of a repair job on that one. I'd hate to see it go by the wayside here uh, when the repaired one is so close by. And so far, if there are any veterans that are buried here, I have not seen any flags or uh, GAR markers or really any sort of uh, indicator as of yet. I keep hearing the sounds of people, at least it, what sounds like people. Um, I don't see anybody close by though. 
I don't think anybody's gonna give me trouble, but uh, just some uh, very, very strange noises. And at the moment, it would appear that I'm at the very back. It looks like this place is marked fairly well. As you can see uh, right now, I am approaching at least a marker showing you the boundary lines. And then this here seems to be the very last stone. And this one looks in pretty amazing condition comparatively. Uh, a lot of these stones uh, have a lot of growth on them and a lot of decay, but this one seems fairly clear. It's kind of interesting in a way because a lot of the bigger graveyards that I visit um, that seem to have a really large budget for them to be cared for all over the years end up being the ones where the borders are the worst defined and uh, places like this which uh, seem to be only cared for by the locals that live around here not by any organization actually tend to be better cared for at least in terms of not forgetting anybody you know you'll see a lot more decay on the actual stones but no one's kind of left outside of the boundaries and there's never any new boundaries established for whatever strange reason that happens to begin with. And here's a very interesting uh, thing. It almost appears as if over the years the top part fell off and instead of uh, replacing it, they actually just recarved all of the information into what was left. I can't really think of any other reason it would be like this because you can see right here is actually the hole where the anchor would have gone to uh, keep the top little pinnacle in place. And I'm not sure about those stones at the entrance now because it appears now that there are some structures very similar uh, here at the very back, which may indicate that they are some sort of vault. Uh, and there might just be a very big family section up at the front, and that's why it appears to almost look like a road now. I'm really surprised. Because for being in such kind of bad condition and having fallen over and cracked in the middle, the writing on this particular marker, uh, even though it's so thin and appears to be very shallowly in engraved, has really lasted quite a long time. And right here, there used to be a burial, and you can tell because of the way that the leaves are now trapped in the indent here in the ground because underneath the uh, wooden coffin has uh, rotted away and formed sort of like a sinkhole below the surface. And uh, no longer there. No longer is there any type of marker or anything left, but we know for certain in cases like this that there definitely was somebody that was uh, buried in that location. It definitely looks like there are some uh, veteran graves here. This was an Ohio infantry man that uh, Apparently uh, moved to uh, Indiana after the war was over him, potentially, and uh, passed away here. But uh, no markers, no flags or anything like that, which is kind of sad. 
but maybe some people get out here from time to time but I, I just can't tell uh, for sure right now there's definitely some signs of flowers that have been brought out and placed on the graves so someone is definitely around from time to time but it just doesn't appear it's very often and I'm not even sure how often a place like this would have to even be mowed It was very sad. The graveside here of a one day old infant. And um, based on the way it was built, it would appear that this was probably a fairly elaborate display and may have even included one of those um, baskets very similar to a graveyard I had done some time ago with the uh, an actual statue of the uh, child uh, carved inside. not sure exactly what is happening in this section. I've seen a lot of different strange things all together, including a couple bricks. And I know it seems strange, but it almost looks like it's there in a specific pattern as if it used to exist as part of something else. And it is directly behind this uh, marker here, as well as these pieces of uh, a mason jar, which I can't really tell how old it is being so cracked apart like this and uh, having the label missing. So I don't know if there used to be a structure around here somewhere, but it seems unlikely with the river being so close by. There must be shellfish of some sort. These are shells that appear to have been uh, broken by a uh, possibly some animal around here and I don't really know what this stone is right here because it doesn't have any markings on it like it appears to be any sort of gravestone however it seems a little out of place and then they there's a lot more glass Whatever it is, it doesn't seem like there was anything in the jar. See, and you can you can see more brick here and then more of this flattened stone almost as if there used to be at least a small building around here somewhere maybe sort of a maintenance shed or I don't even know but it seems like there definitely was something more here at one time I'm not seeing anything over the edge But there is a sort of clearing along the side up here, so I don't know, maybe there's something up that way. There's lots of interesting last names in here that I haven't uh, heard used recently. I'm seeing a couple uh, 
people with the last name Fix, uh, some people with the last name Click, and uh, not anything that I've actually seen used before. It's actually the first car that uh, drove by since I got here, and they definitely rolled their window all the way down and then pointed right at my car. We'll see here in a few minutes if I end up having any visitors. And although it appears as if this uh, particular marker right here is at the edge, as I was saying, there's this really kind of strange clearing behind the grave here, and it appears like there's some flowers that have been spread about, and definitely some uh, bottles. I think it might just be some, yeah, definitely some alcohol bottles. But... Um, kind of confirming what I was saying previously, there's even more bricks here surrounding this tree. So I'm thinking there might have actually at one time been a structure in this area and you can kind of even see with the trees, a lot of these trees in this area are a lot younger and smaller than uh, the surrounding areas. And so this might have been a place for a church or like I said, a maintenance shed, or even um, a small building that would have been used uh, to uh, place the casket right before the burial happened. And I can imagine it being here just for the view alone. It seems like the perfect place to have been built. And right down there is another brick. So I'm guessing that this is exactly what I'm thinking, and this is the place of a former structure. Actually, we're coming up on a very large drop-off here, where this uh, little tributary here has eroded away the hill and made about a 15 to 20 foot drop straight down. I definitely see signs that somebody's been here. I've left behind a bottle of sana hand sanitizer. I'll go ahead and take that with me. Throw it away properly. Again, it just really impresses me how well these engravings, despite being so small and shallow, uh, have survived over the years so well. And it looks as if the only section I'm seeing that actually has a few graves that were left out and beyond the current borders is ahead of me right now. And they're leaning up against this tree on the other side of the fence. And I'm kind of wondering, I was thinking as I was walking up on this that it was actually a family section. And I'm not incredibly sure now if that's the case. It's one thing I'm noticing is that there doesn't seem to be the ruins of any markers. And then there's this very large flat stone here, which almost seems more uh, reminiscent of a piece of foundation than an actual grave marker. And so this right here may have been the actual site of the building from which all of those bricks came from. And as we continue this way, you can see coming up here at this tree is the only section that seems to have been changed around dramatically and has been left out of the borders of the modern day cared for cemetery. 
and again I don't know why this is and it seems strange here because it would have been so easy to have included it but you can see this whole pile of here uh, which may consisted it looks up to five or six different uh, grave markers here and I don't know if they're just uh, here because they don't know where else they go or uh, whether they just don't know exactly what to do uh, to uh, restore it or potentially it may be part of a future restoration process and right behind this tree which seems to have actually grown around the border marker I have to be very careful stepping around because you can see even more markers are here there's another one right here and behind the tree is yet another piece including a few uh, more bricks that look as if it might have came from that structure but uh, very interesting how the tree over the years has grown up and actually has begun to engulf the uh, marker And yet another jar. And completely empty other than the dirt that has filled it over the years. Perhaps if there was a, a church here originally, they may have uh, kept some uh, canning supplies uh, just for the congregation, or I'm not sure exactly. But uh, you do notice a lot of older jars at places like this. And this here is a piece of uh, corrugated metal used uh, for siding and uh, roofing a lot of times. Probably means that that was not a family plot and rather was a building. I'm gonna go ahead and make my way now back to the main part of the graveyard. It appears that there's no other pieces of the building that are back in the woods here or any more markers that have been left out of the existing boundaries. You can see lots of the stones here have actually fallen over and have become flattened into the ground. Oh, we got somebody on a four-wheeler driving by. And this here definitely looks like it was sectioned off at one time with a uh, chain going in between these posts here and it was a family section for looks like the Smiths. Uh, 
I think we'll kind of end up here. I just wanted to show you guys this and how incredible this one looks. Probably the best yet that I've found here and maybe anywhere. The lettering is still so distinctive and very beautiful. And even though it's fallen over, it looks absolutely incredible. I'm hoping somebody eventually puts this one back up. But I'd like to thank you guys for coming along with me on this recent exploration. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this uh, channel if you've never subscribed and check out a bunch of these awesome historic places just like this one and I will see you all in the next adventure. Bye everybody.